evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? This is a Sunday night uh, live show. I was about to say something completely different there. This is a Sunday night live show, and tonight we are asking, uh, what am I asking? Oh, what are your gardening goals for 2023? This is a great subject re recommended by the lovely Rebecca, um, and I think it's, it's a good question to ask ourselves at this time of year. Now, first of all, let me bring up, if I can find it, the phone line is open 07307 135 174. I've tried a different phone this week. The number's still the same, but the phone's in something different. So hopefully it's going to work. And uh, what else have we got coming up to this week? We have got the photo collection as always. We're going to be sowing some aubergine seeds and we've got a get to know you video from Stuart Jackson. That's all coming up a little bit later on. First of all, let's see if anybody is actually out there. And straight away, Bally Cillian is out there. Good evening, Richard and Adrian and the Veg Growing Army. Good evening to you. Adrian is out there. Good evening to you. Oracle is out there. Hello, Army and Stuart Jackson over on Facebook. Good evening to you. Uh, Richard Golden has joined. Good evening to you. Uh, Digwell has joined saying hi all. Uh, I recall I asked Richard to keep you blocked. Bit of a, a joke going on there. Don't worry, I don't ever block anybody. Uh, Turbo Stream is out there. Good evening, Bench Podcasters. Good evening to you. Uh, do, 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 do. Anybody else? Yep, Hargrave Gas is out there. Evening, everyone. Hope you've had a great week. What rain we've had over the last 24 hours. Oh, hasn't it been amazing? Um, I've been constantly checking the weather report this week trying to work out when I can get out into the garden and I'm being on call this weekend as well my plan was to go to the allotment yesterday it didn't work so I had to go down this morning but when I woke up this morning it was absolutely hammering it down we had a yellow alert about the weather going through but by 10 o'clock it stopped raining and 11 o'clock I was on the allotment and it was a blazing hot day then fast forward to about four half four it started absolutely hammering it down again. Thunder and lightning as well, which was really fun. Anyway, um, I digress. Uh, Jenny Hullett is out there. Hello, everyone. I hope you've all had a good day. Good evening to you. Uh, Anna Jones is saying evening gardeners. Good evening to you. Um, now, somebody in the Facebook group is saying good evening, Bench Army. I suspect that could be Stuart Jackson, but I might be wrong. If you are watching in the Facebook group, unfortunately, it doesn't come up with your name unless you give it permission. So please just let me know who you are at the end of your uh, at the end of a comment. That'd be great. Uh, Rebecca Hawkins is out there, who is the person who suggested this week's subject. Uh, lovely to see you, uh, Stuart Jackson. As evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Good evening to you. Um, David Williams, hi all, made alive again, chuffed, lovely to see you David. Uh, Anna Costalis, hope I've pronounced your name correctly, is all the way from Canada, had a lovely email from Anna during the week, or Anne, sorry, uh, during the week, hope you got my reply, I've had quite a few lovely emails this week, and they keep making me, absolutely blowing me away, and yours was just one of them, lovely to see you, and thank you for joining in. Um, so somebody in the Facebook group, it's raining too hard to get to the allotment today, wanted to get garlic in, but made two kinds of stews, batch cooking for the week and scones today instead. Lovely jubbly. Unfortunately, I don't know who that is, as I said. Uh, Idaho Garden Girls, hello. hello, Richard and everyone. Hello to you. Hope you are well. Nicola Cornish, heaven. Evening all. Internet keeps buffering tonight, but I hope to enjoy this evening with you all. Yeah, internet might be a problem. I'm keeping a close eye, uh, especially if thunder and lightning comes through. Uh, my dad has joined. Good evening. At least the storm has gone through now. I hope it has passed. Really do hope it has passed. Brian's Garden Polytunnel has joined. Good evening to you. Um, uh, dig well. It wasn't the thunder or lightning that woke me up at 5 a.m. It was the rain hitting the roof in tents. Yeah, we had the same problem. I know exactly how you feel there. Uh, oh, it's Kate Spratt in the Facebook group. Um, lovely to see you, Kate. Thank you very much for joining in and let me know who you are. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, let's just scan through. Uh, Anna, Anne says it's sunny here in Canada. Lucky you. It's just getting dark here. At um, Just getting dark. 
And at this time next Sunday, of course, next Sunday's live show, uh, if you're not in the UK, we're still going live at six o'clock in the UK, but we move our clocks forward an hour. So we might be an hour earlier, depending where you are in the world. Just to make everyone aware, our clocks move forward for next sun Sunday. So just be, be prepared for that. Uh, David Williams has said, made so much apple wine in frozen apple this week. It's untrue. How lovely. Fantastic pot of that apple to some good use. So what is your gar your gardening goals for 2022? This is a, a question that has been um, quite, oh, this has been a question I've been pondering all week. And in fact, it's a question I ask myself every year. What can we do? Um, what can we do to uh, plan our goals for the next year? And well, I, I've written quite a few up. And the first one I'm going to start with is that I want to grow more at home. Now, my garden is fairly decent size, as is my allotment. And I do a lot more on my allotment than what I do at home. But we've been adding more beds to our home plot and into which I'm going to be growing more stuff at home. So, um, yeah, that's what one of the big things I'm doing at home. An extra bed is going in, at least one, maybe even three in the end. More fruits in pots and in various areas using the front garden, the balcony garden, the patio garden. Every square bit of space I'm allowed to use will be turned into growing food. And I say allowed to use because I have to have a bit of lawn area towards the front of the house for the wife and for Roxy. So not everything is going to be used in quite the same way. Um, David is saying back, Richard. Yes, I mean, I did mean back. So, but six o'clock then becomes five o'clock, doesn't it? So, it, we, we're coming on an hour earlier. Um, so, I've been trying, I, I, I was trying to explain that as, as easily as possible. Clocks go back. So, six o'clock, five o'clock becomes six o'clock. No, hang on. Yeah, six o'clock becomes five o'clock so we would be going live at six in the uk but that might be five elsewhere depending on what no depending on your time zone <laughs> um hope hope that makes sense it's confusing i know uh i'm peeling and slicing apples and loading up the dehydrator fantastic love the hydrate hydrator um lo, we we got uh we got ourselves for this week actually a brand new um Oh, uh, what's it called? Uh, air fryer. That's it. Which also has a dehydrator function. It's not. I haven't tested it out yet. I don't think it's quite as good as our actual dehydrator. S spring forward, fall back. Yes, yes. It does go black back next week. Clocks go back, so six o'clock becomes five o'clock, and that's what I mean. It's hang on. No, we'll be an hour later, wouldn't we? No. Oh, I, I give up. I give up. It, it hurts my head sometimes. My goal is to improve the peat-free compost. That's a good one, actually. I know a lot of people are having trouble with peat-free compost. I I moved on to peat-free compost permanently a couple of years ago now. Um, and I've got to admit, the quality of peat free compost does vary a lot. I'm hoping when this actual ban comes into place that the quality control of peat free compost is really going to improve because it is a bit of a problem. Um, but it's all got it's all something that we have got to now start doing. Hope hope to spend 23 catching up on 20 and 21. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and he forgot about 22. Yes, spend next year Catching up on everything you should have done over the last year. Good point. Good point. I've got to say, I feel 20 this year has been a pretty good year overall. We've had some challenges, which has given us a bit more time. But I think the most important thing that I've learned from this year is how to actually try and uh, make the time for my what I want to do with the garden and the allotment a bit more important than going to work. All hours, that is. Bally Cillian, my main aim next year is to grow at a more regular rate. So I have steady crops with fewer gluts during the season. That's a good one, actually. Yes, trying to um, trying to uh, 
try trying to uh, what's the word um trying to make sure the lettuces aren't all available at the same time trying to space them out every few weeks spread the seeds that's a very good one yes i know exactly what you mean and carrots and things like that that just become available all at the same time it does get very very tricky doesn't it i like that one uh, rebecca says i've been thinking a lot about my garden after the long hot summer we had this year I'm definitely thinking about changing my plants to be more drought tolerant. My conditions have changed so much over, I'm guessing this is this last year. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a big, big, big fan of having as many water butts as we can possibly fit in. I've got 14 in my gut. Hang on, is it 14? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've got 16 water pots in my back, in my garden, in front and back garden alone. Um, and what I find with that many water pots, we don't have to use mains water and we survived the drought without any problems. So, yeah, I do think w one way to look at, at preventing drought, catch as much rainwater as you possibly can. Stuart Jackson says, my goal for gardening next year is to only sow what I'm I'm going to eat at home but at school grow as much as we can plus grow some different vegetables so the children get to taste unusual vegetables that's a very good good plan actually i like the um only sowing what you're going to eat i think that's a very very admirable goal and obviously you have the advantage that effectively you have several gardens you look after Stuart. so you've got your home garden which is just for you but then you've got a school garden for the kids I, I I do like I do like that. I do think that's great. Tobo Spoon says 6 p.m. GMT is easier for overseas viewers to work out. Yes, that does. I don't know why I don't say 6 p.m. GMT. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kate in the Facebook group says one of my goals is to harvest more of my own seeds. That's a good idea. You want to save more of your own seeds. That's a, a very, very good one, I've got to say. I think we um Hmm. I keep saying every year I should so sort of try and save some more seeds. And I think I might look into that more next year. I'm hoping adding Koya will help. No secret. This is from Good Brian's Garden Polytunnel. Talking about the peat free Koya. Yes, uh, I've been uh, having a lot of discussion with somebody about Koya and something we're looking at more and more. Um, the There's some compressed composts on the market that I, I like, actually. Because they come in a block like that, you pour them in a wheelbarrow with some water, and that's 70 litres in something that doesn't take up much room in shipping and everything because of the coir. So definitely something to uh, think about, coir, to help peat free. Uh, Oracle says, myself and Millard, Mil Mil I always struggle with this name, I'm apologies, Millard, is to still be alive and fit enough to make the allotment. We hope that too. We want that to, that as well. We hope you're going to be with us for a very long time. Um, Digwell says, the response from the National Farmers Union about the peat ban and alternative was quite an eye-opener. They were disgusted with the peat-free alternatives. Yeah, peat-free alternatives is... It's very debatable. I mean, I've had some good peat free. I've had some bad peat free, both from the same supplier. So it's very mixable. However, what I feel is the real answer, and I, I'm running experiments with this next year more, is if we try to use our own homemade compost more and see just how good results we get from that. Turbo Stream says, my aim is to grow more over winter and grow more of each plant so I can share some more produce with friends. That's a good idea, actually, sharing to, with friends, sharing more plants with various people. Um, I've been going for my seed collection this week and it's, it's taken me forever. Um, and one of the things that I've realised, I end up with way too many seeds at the end of the season that are going out of date. And so I've, I'm, I'm sort of looking next year to really start ramping up how much these seeds I sow. And uh, what I'm going to be hoping to do is give away some of those extra plants or sell, even sell some of those extra plants at car boots and things. Uh, my dream is to own a nursery. So this could be a, a footstep on the way to owning my own nursery. 
Uh, Jenny says, I plan to be much more self-sufficient. That's also one of mine, actually, but to be more self-sufficient. But I say that every year. I mean, that's a question I've, I've got in the pipeline. How self-sufficient are you? Uh, but I plan to be more self-sufficient as I have felt so healthy this year. I've grown more than ever this year, and it's opened my eyes to my health needs. Much more beans, tomatoes, broccolis, etc. Yeah, definitely growing more of what you eat. I, but I personally believe that the real key to self-sufficiency is to grow all year round, to use every bit of space you have available to you and to um, only grow what you really eat and try and experiment a bit more with what you grow and can eat. So quinoa is a good example of something that I, I've tried to grow and always fail with. David Williams says, I've just got my second greenhouse out of the plot sorted, hopefully. So hoping to utilise that with more chilies and kooks. I also like to try watermelons again. Good, that, good, good, actually. Uh, as somebody else who's just got my second greenhouse on the allotment, I'm planning on using one for tomatoes and chilies and the other for cucumbers and melons and watermelons. I've grown watermelons, but they don't get very big. But my neighbour has grown some really big watermelons. So it can it can be done. Um, definitely something we're going to be trying next year. Next year from Anna Jones, I'm going to try and make an effort to keep flower heads out of the compost bins. We get good compost from our garden, but the weeds that come with it are a real nuisance. Yeah, I mean, it, this is actually a very, uh, a very common problem, flowers and weeds in the seeds. The one trick that I've learned over the years and uh, to to um, kill off any weeds is to try and get the compost really really hot so i find that chopping everything up nice and small i run over everything with my lawnmower really helps at getting that heat into that compost bin and it kills off any weeds it does need a mixture of browns and greens as always but i i don't struggle with that but getting it hot as well helps and says my goal is to outwit the pigeons. That's a good one. That's a very good one. I don't have many problems with pigeons apart from seagulls. Um, but yeah, um, pigeons can be a bit of a problem. Lots of netting, lots of bird scarers. Um, you name it is what we you need to do. Digwell says one of my goals is to stop growing veg to impress others and only grow what I like to eat. No kale, etc. Um, I think that's a golden rule. Always grow what you like to eat, unless you are a show, a, a, the type of person who grows for the competitions. I'm, I'm not a lover of competitions because I grow for food. I grow for flavour. I keep saying one year I might go down, but I've never. This year it got cancelled. Our local one, my Melvern was meant to be a very good one. I didn't get to that one. Um. <laughs> Digwell says Koya will be the next greenwasher's enemy. And there's a lot of complaints about Koya, i.e. with its transportation. But people who are importing Koya responsibly, um, the mathematics shows that it can be less harmful than the peat-based compost. So I think nothing's going to be great. Nothing is going to be great with Koya. Or whatever we use for peat free, everyone's going to be unhappy. Is the bottom line? Uh, Digweb, didn't you do a fried seaweed vid? Did you actually use seaweed for that or kale? Haven't watched it yet. I think if I remember right, it was spring greens, but I could be wrong. Uh, Rebecca says that's a great idea, Digweb. My non gardening friends always ask me what they should grow, and I always tell them whatever you like to eat. Totally right, totally right. There, it is all about. Uh, growing what you like to eat. Andrew Norris has joined. Good evening to you. And Anne, I got some chickpea seeds from a seed library. Anyone, any tips? Yes. So chickpeas are a legume. I grew them a couple of years ago quite successfully. They do need a long, hot summer to be really successful, but they are really easy to grow, to be honest. If you don't get that long, hot summer, like you might you can still harvest the chickpeas as they're green and they need to be eaten straight away. But I managed to get mine to the dry state and managed to um, get those to the point that uh, they were storable. They were really nice chickpeas, I've got to say. Absolutely. Uh, Jenny says, I didn't grow anywhere near enough any beans this year, 
but you don't know until you try. I'm growing quinoa next year, but how many plants would you guys recommend? So my experience with quinoa is absolutely, um, I didn't get them to grow at all. So I cannot help you with that. Um, but definitely with uh, growing enough beans, that's a problem I have as well. And this is where my garden plans, which are part of my goal, garden plans are, are coming into fruition. Uh, Andrew has says, once it comes up, my garden goal next year is to grow parsnips successfully. That seems to be a common one people struggle with. Um, uh, parsnips, definitely a big, big problem. Turbo Stream says to uh, pre-soak a drill and sow thickly um, for the parsnip. That makes sense. Yes, yeah, so lots of seeds in a small area, so they all help push and break through that soil. That's not a bad idea at all. Uh, Hargrave guess my aims are a bit more basic. I need to get two raised beds in and finish so my growing it can be a lot more organized. I know how you feel there. I've funny enough on my list is to be more tidier and organized as my goal for next year. Something I mean, I love planning and I can be pretty organized. Being tidier is the big problem, but um. Part of my thing, as you know, at the moment, I'm building new beds on the allotment. I built one in a previous video, and I've got two more I'm hoping to get this week. Uh, and more beds at home. And I feel that once I get those, I can be a little bit more organised. I was working it out just the other day, funny enough. You know, if I have four beds in the allotment, that's the four crop rotation system ready to go there. Down on the allotment, I have 12 beds. Well, break that down into three beds for the four crop rotation system as well. Just little things like that, I find, help make me a little bit more organised. David Williams says, this compost stays in the bin for at least two years. Haven't used it. Oh, uh, I think that was in reply to something else. I'm missing half a computation. Digwell says, my Harry the Hawkeye and ping pong balls and streams seems to work well at, at the flying rats, pigeons. But they do need moving around now and then when they get used to them. Yes, yeah, so those big... Uh, statues of hawks with the big bright eyes seem to work at scaring off pigeons and ping pong balls on strings or anything that's going to move in the wind works as well. Um, again, I, I struggle with uh, uh, having problems with pigeons because I don't get many. Occasionally I do, but not many. Brian's gun and polytunnel. I sometimes grow hot peppers if I have the space, even though I don't eat them. I grow them for pleasure. I love my hot chilies. I love my hot chilies. Um, definitely do that. Uh, Digwell did say, yes, my crispy spring, my crispy seaweed was spring greens. I thought it was. Um, Facebook, you, oh, this is Kate. Uh, I'm trying not to repeat my newbie mistake last year of starting things indoors too early. Anything I can start growing indoors in my kitchen on a large windowsill. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's another problem that people often do, isn't it? Starting the seeds off too early, running out of space and panicking. I mean, again, this is where I'm very lucky in that I've, I've got plenty of room and I've set everything up to do it. And I don't really, apart from the kitchen windowsill, but I try not to grow much indoors. Again, I'm lucky. Greenhouses, sheds, etc., etc. <laughs> now Rebecca says one of my garden girls is to walk away from a seed section in the garden centre. I do not need any more seeds. On the podcast this week, funny enough, that's something I'm sort of discussing. Um, so yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I, I my last count, and this is going back a couple of years ago now. I had six hundred packets of seeds. I reckon now we're probably well over, well over two thousand packets of seeds, and. I've been going through them this week. It's been an absolute nightmare to sort these out. Jenny says, I have made a catalogue of the seeds I have, which I edit when I get to you new or use some. Really helps me plan. All in a notebook, I don't do spreadsheets. We were talking about this last week, weren't we? Um, how using spreadsheets and various things like that to help uh, keeping track of things. So, yeah, good, good show. Good show indeed. Um, Jenny also says that is a hard one for Rebecca's. Yeah, I know. Indeed. Nicola says, what I want to achieve in 2023, make a hot compost bin and just be more motivated. Now, hopefully watching this each week will help motivate you as well. I know you, you're down on that new farm of yours. There's a lot of work that you have to do just to get started. So, 
Yeah, I know how you mean. My second goal for 2023, says Digwell, was to install a small wildfire life pond. But I did that yesterday. I saw the picture as well. I saw the picture. I had a great little, only a little plastic container sunk in the ground. Uh, he sat there, watched it for 10 minutes and saw no wildlife. So um, hopefully by now wildlife has moved in. Oracle says, let's tell the truth. Come a start of the growing season, no matter what you say, the goals go out the window. You see a space and you always say, I could grow this and that there. That is totally true. Funny enough, I'm talking about this in the planning section at the moment. That I love planning, but I know all the best blade plans just go out the window as soon as things start to happen. Um, yeah. Uh, Andrew says, Richard, how long do you keep seeds? With so many, they must go back a few years. Are they still viable? Now, this is a, actually a very good question. This thing, again, comes out on the podcast from tomorrow. So what I tend to do now, because I've got so many seeds, I any seeds that are out of date, unless I can use them for microgreens, I get rid of them. I cannot be bothered to keep hold of out-of-date seeds. Now, there's a good chance that out-of-date seeds will still be viable. The, the out of date only really means that they can't that the, the viability tests haven't been as good as when they are brand new so you might be okay with them being out of date but for me i hate what as much as i hate waste i'd sooner waste a few seeds than waste compost and soil to and water trying to grow seeds that aren't going to grow so any out of date they are the ones that go uh, oracle says then when you're a top grower at like millard People always offer you plants and you don't like to say no. I think it's to see how she grows. I know that feeling. It's the same as all the discount plants at garden centres and supermarkets. I cannot say no to them. I ended up with so many various little, uh, uh, what are they called, uh, fruit bushes and things because I couldn't say no when they get selling them off for like 10p or a pound. Rebecca, well, you've made me feel better now, Richard. Maybe I can get a couple more packs. Yeah, yeah. You know, the thing is, there's always new tr varieties to try, and each year new varieties come out. So there's always room to try um, to try them and see what we've got. Stuart says, another goal is to use the old seeds first. Also not to overbuy seeds when they are cheap. Yeah, but, but I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. I know uh, when it comes to sowing seeds, some people actually make a seed sowing schedule. So they would say, like, these seeds can be sown in this month, so we'll sow them in this week. I don't like that idea for one very simple reason, is that you've got to pay attention to what the weather is doing to work out if it is worth sowing a seed. So I tend to avoid that for that very reason. Uh now, Anne says, I've heard seeds lose 10% 10, 10 of their viability every year. Not sure if that is true for everything. So it does depend. There's so many factors that go in with seeds. So how well they're stored, the conditions they're stored in, how viable they were when they were put in their packet, and uh, what the varieties are. So something like carrots, they're only really good for a year. Carrots, onions, parsnips. Um any older than a year, not really worth it. But then other seeds, I mean, I've known seeds that are five, ten years old and they still grow. So it's a lot of to and fro in, but yeah. Uh, Jenny says, an article I read, a article I read, the gardener found his grandfather's tomato seeds from the 80s stored in a roses tin. For funny, so showed, for funny, sowed them in lockdown and some germinated. Plants are amazing. Um, yeah, it's all about that viability. Out of date seeds may be okay, but it's not a chance. It may not be risk. It may may not be the chance. I'm trying something new next year, says Digwell. All my very out of date seeds will be mixed together and broadcast over a bed just to see what happens. Well, I say things that we can use for microgreens. Our uh, out of date cabbages, Brussels sprouts, radish. I we just use those for microgreens. And then everything else I get rid of. Uh, Turbo Stream says, some bloke in Lillehampton keeps sending me seeds. No wonder I have loads of seeds. Now, um, we'll come back. This seems like a good good point to uh, to just cut off. And we're going to sow some aubergine seeds. As you know, I said 
Uh, we're going to start trying to grow seeds or sowing seeds on this show. And funny enough, this is something that fits quite nicely. When I've been sorting out my seeds, I found I got hundreds and hundreds of aubergine seeds uh, just sitting around waiting. And I read during the week uh, somewhere that aubergine seeds, oh, hang on, that's wrong, sorry. Uh, aubergine seeds can actually be um, sown at this time of year. So zoom in a little bit and there we go. So what I thought I'd do this week is we would just sow some of these seeds to get them used up. And hopefully if they do work, we can it'd be a good experiment to see if they actually do work and do produce. Aubergines are something I often struggle with. I never seem to be able to get uh, many aubergines fruits. Uh, otherwise known as eggplants to those who are who don't know what I'm talking about when I say aubergines. Just suddenly thought I'd better throw that in there. So, yeah, I, I, I struggle. They do. I do find aubergines and egg, or eggplants need a very long growing season. So hopefully, a bit like chilies, if we sow them at this time of year, we might just be able to get a decent crop of these delicious fruits. So. I'm sowing these quite thickly, as you can see, just to use them up. That's probably a bit too thick. Just to use them up. I'm just going to try and spread them around with my finger. These, of course, will need a bit of thinning out. And I'm just going to tamp them down like that. So they're all in contact with the soil. And there we go. Not forgetting, of course, I just dropped it on the floor, so bear with me. Not forgetting, of course, the label to tell me what they are. I will sprinkle some compost, some seed compost over the top of those seeds uh, when I finish this live show. I don't want to do it just now because it will make a mess of my table um, and potentially get dirt into the computer stuff. So, yeah. Um, had some aubergine seeds sown at this time of year. I'm seeing just what happens if they work. I don't know. My neighbour... I wrote to his garden every year. No gophers. I am no dig. Lots of gophers, I am thinking. And there may be something in it. There may be something in it. But the reason you might be getting the gophers, same as moles, is because your soil is so much better because of your no dig. You've actually got worms and things. I'm assuming gophers would eat worms. I don't know much about them. But I know in the case of moles, they will eat the worms. So if you've got moles, you've probably got good soil. It, to me, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Ballycillian, I know I'm always moaning about Brexit, but this year not being able to get seeds from mainland has actually helped me be more careful what I could get and with less waste. Yes, that is a, a very, very good point, Ballycillian. I know um, Northern Ireland with trouble getting seeds to you guys because I know with my supporters club, some of you guys want to join. I did have somebody in Belfast join, actually. And as far as I know, he has received his seeds. Um, but I cannot guarantee they are going to arrive. It's a condition I, I have to add. I'm just waiting before I broadcast that out to you guys that do want to join the supporters club, that is. But, I, I, yeah, just something to bear in mind. Oh, cool. You're lucky, Turbo Stream. The same person blocked the seed sending over a minor I might over a mine up Boris Johnson moment of madness. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a Northern Ireland guys. It's 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 such a mess. It's such a mess trying to get that part of the UK to get some vegetable seeds or flower seeds. It, yeah, Jenny says, "Oh my goodness, days! I've just seen what you wrote. Sorry for the LOL. I think we typed at the same. Oh, I missed something. I missed something there." Um, I don't see. I try and do every uh, do every comment, but um, sometimes I have to skip over just for speed. Now, Tara Noon, another person I had a lovely email from. Lovely to see you and thank you for joining. My goals for next year is to grow a massive pumpkin. I had a lot of trouble with rabbits this year, but fingers crossed for 2023. Going to grow lots of squash. Um, yeah, great idea. I mean, I. Uh, I'm not a fan of growing massive pumpkins. I grow for food. I know next week's Halloween, and uh, I'm sure many of us are going to be having pumpkins everywhere. Um, 
my advice what i always say when it comes to growing good pumpkins big pumpkins need a lot of water and a lot of heat and my biggest tip is to grow it in your compost heap you'd be amazed just how well squash plants grow in a compost heap i don't know if anybody else is going to back me up on that but that's what i've said um many times many many times and i know many people have actually gone out and grown more and more of their squash plants in their compost heaps because of what i've said so uh so far I've, I've said that some of my garden well two of my garden goals are to grow more at home and to be tidier and more organized i say tidier and more organized every year it never really happens but something i'm also looking at doing is to make and use more of our home made compost uh, home or allotment made that is now i'm i'm realizing that although i do produce a lot of compost and i fill up bins quite quickly i never seem to produce enough compost i still have to resort to buying in compost and that's something i really want to stop doing so how am i going to achieve this well, the key thing, I think, is we need more compost heaps. We need to be able to produce compost quickly. And if it's, it's produced quickly, we can then hopefully pot the produced compost into one container, a bin or something, and keep adding produced compost to that until we need it, freeing up some more of our compost bins so that we're getting everything rotated and made quickly. Um, and getting the compost material is also the biggest, a big challenge. We need to be able to find where we can get more material from. Paper, cardboard, you know, we, we use all that as much as we possibly can to try and make more and more compost. So that's a big thing on my list. I don't know if anybody else, uh, I think we've mentioned compost already, but that's something, a big thing I say. <laughs> Digwell says massive pumpkins feed more people than small ones. It's true. That's a very good point. It is very, very true. I just, for me, and it's just my personal opinion, I grow food, and I've said this time and time again. I grow food. What people do with their own stuff is completely up to them. I grow food, so and I, and I grow the massive pumpkins for show to me doesn't quite hit the target. And I feel with this cost of living, um, I'm pushing it a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I grow I grow food, but what you guys do is completely up to you. <laughs> don't Jenny says don't forget the melon grown and the shark fin squash. Yes, we're going to be doing a melon grown competition next year, and the shark fin squash we're still trying to figure out. I've just realised there's emails I've got to get back to about somebody that's offered some area to grow shark fin melon. So hopefully we might try the shark fin melon shark next year to see how we get on. But the melon growing competition next year, um, we've got to work out the details. But yeah, yeah. Uh, David Williams says, Tyra, biggest pumpkin I've grown was called Big Man or something similar. Huge things. Big boy, I think it was called the one. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, Tabay Stream says, I hope to be more organized next year too, and to remember to feed as I water the plot. Yes, that comes down to being organized. I think it's difficult, isn't it, to get the feeding routines quite right, but we can do it. Um, shark fin melon. Yeah. David says, I use a lot of cardboard for composting, but still unsure about what cardboard is unsuitable. I just use it all. I've given up trying to work it out. I just use it all. If it hasn't compost, excuse me, if it hasn't composted down, then it's time for it to go. Uh, Bally Celine, just, just to end the Brexit thing, people ask why I don't order from Southern Ireland, but us in the North are sterling and the South are Euro, so it makes it expensive with bank charges, etc. I think also there's import costs you may have to pay because you're not part of the European Union. I could be wrong, so I'm not going to profess to know um, what's going on there because uh, I'm not in Northern Ireland. It's just it's so complicated uh, to work it out, but yeah. Uh, David Williams says, apparently the ink-infused cardboards one isn't possible. Most of the inks they use now are from vegetable oils, vegetable oils. So it should be, in theory, okay. 
Digma says, I have two compost bins on one plot, but we are banned from bringing anything to the site. So all I can pot in is my cuttings. Hardly worth bothering. This is a, yeah, this is the problem. We've got the same thing. We're not allowed to take any compost materials down to the allotment. We can only use what is on site, except for manure, which is a shame because my neighbor is actually a landscape gardener and he often brings back his his truck just full of compost material and i look at it and i think well, i could use all that perhaps and he he just throws it in the garden waste bin which you shouldn't do but it's a it's such a good material it's like i could use that i might have a word with him one day about that where will you store them once they've started growing till the frosts have passed where will you store what so if i missed something there nicola where will i store what uh rebecca says i always do feed it fridays always helps me Rebecca, i'd like that feed it fridays that's a good one i do like that feed it friday yes feed it friday that works quite nicely because i don't I don't do much on a friday night I don't publish any content or anything so um friday night feed it friday yes i'm gonna do that thank you thank you i'm gonna make a note of that because that's such a good one feed it Friday. I like that. Uh, David says, thank you. I was thinking the same, but wanted backup. And Digwell says, uh, I think all cardboard is suitable these days as it's ink or as it's ink is starch or veg based. No petrol chemicals. He says, that's exactly what I thought. So um, all good, all good. Idaho says, I've heard that most ink is vegetable based, but shiny paper or labels not. I, I Again, I throw it in there. Some of that shininess could be a plastic, um, but I haven't found it yet. It does seem to just degrade in what I use each year. If, again, my rule of thumb, if it hasn't broken down in a few months, then it's no good. Um, and the hardest thing to I find to get rid of is the sellotape that they used. If only they make a compostable sellotape, and I think they'll be on to a winner. Uh, Digwell says, I feed with a seaweed solution at every watering. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Seaweed is, of course, very good for promoting root growth. So good roots, um, every watering. Uh, it must be a very weak solution of seaweed to do that time for a quick swig of coffee um now there's a another thing or another one of my goals for the next year to have a quick look at that time yeah another one of my goals for next year is that i've want to grow more cucumbers and this is it partly because now we have the second greenhouse i'm dedicated one to cucumbers and one to tomatoes and um I, I we we grow enough cucumbers especially the dill cucumbers the little ones for pickling but next year i really want to grow lots and lots of cucumbers we use them quite a bit in various meals and dishes and the ones you buy from the supermarket sorry they just don't taste as good so cucumbers is something that i'm aiming for 2023 to grow a lot more of um it just one of the one of my big goals that is uh right um just quickly bally Cillian says we are part we are part so there's no european land border with the uk that's the travel goods only yeah it's it's very confusing this northern ireland thing i'll be honest um as i said i would love to be able to definitely send you seeds each month if, as part of my supporters club in northern ireland i have had someone sign up from Northern Ireland and as far as I know we haven't had any problems but it doesn't sit easy with me and if they do get lost in the post or they don't arrive then that's a part of the problem. Uh, Turbo so get suggesting Rebecca I need to remember that write it down feed it Friday I'm remembering that. David Williams also says don't get me started on cello tape but Digwell says Amazon tape is biodegradable. Yes yes I mean I I'm terrible with Amazon. I buy so much from Amazon, but the tape is biodegradable. It's a fantastic thing. And I wish more and more of our suppliers used it. I mean, part of the reason that I end up with a lot of sellotape at work, 
I get a lot of parts come in in cardboard boxes. When I have to go fit the parts, this sellotape just becomes this big mass of stuff that uh, is difficult to get off the boxes. The boxes I will, of course, use on the allotment as a weed suppressant or compost making so it doesn't go to waste. But if the only, the real sellotape was biodegradable, I would be very, very happy. Brian's Garden Polytunnel. Seaweed is a good foliar feed. Yes, it feeds through the leaves. So they need to they need to get that water on the leaves for it to be successful. Uh, Anne says, I've had great success with dragon egg cucumbers. I've, I think I've seen dragon egg cucumbers. I did the crystal lemon and the crystal apple cucumbers. They were quite nice. Um, and this is the great thing. By... by Next year, wanting to grow more cucumbers, obviously this greenhouse is going to be dedicated to it. I can experiment with many different varieties a bit more as well. So I want to try the standard market more. Uh, I want to try the deal or grow more deals, grow, grow more deals, grow more of the pickling cucumbers, the, the white ones as well, the, the, the rounder ones, the different ones is definitely something uh, I want to try. Stuart Jackson says, I spent a couple of hours shredding paper this morning, ready to mix into the compost bins. How much should I pot in at a time? Thanks, Tim. Now, this is a good question, actually. So the way I break it down is the amount of paper that you shredded in volume, you want to match with that, the shredded paper is a brown material. You want to match that with about the same amount in volume of your green material. So I don't know how much you've you've um, uh shredded but let, let's say an average carrier bag size of shredded paper you want to match that with the average size of uh, average carrier bag size of lawn clippings or green material for it to be the right mixture now that's the correct answer for being it fast and everything in truth who actually is able to always have enough of that for both materials to do that i just throw it all in a compost heap and mix it around and see what happens because it's impossible to have enough brown and greens already at the same time. Um, uh, David Williams says, what Amazon sellotape? Uh, so if you order anything from Amazon, it comes in its own boxes and the sellotape they use to seal those boxes. So it's, it's nondescript is what we mean by the Amazon Amazon sellotape. It's the stuff they use to seal their own boxes. Uh, Rebecca says, I grew too many cucumbers this year. I didn't know what to do with them all. I even started drinking cucumber juice. Um, God, that was a weird noise. There must be a, our neighbours have a dog now as well. Uh, yeah, uh, cucumber juice. That's an interesting thing. I know what you mean. By growing, trying to find different ways of storing and preserving cucumbers but can be tricky we eat a lot of raita which is like a, a cucumber yogurt mix so we'll make a big batch of that and store that in the freezer ready for when we have our our indians um what else do i do with cucumbers cucumber sandwiches of course uh, pickled cucumbers i love pickled cucumbers or gherkins ready for burgers and what have you we, we love those here um Oh, so many things we can do with cucumbers that my mind just escapes me at the moment. TurboStream says the Amazon tape had white reinforced webbing. I thought that was plastic. Perhaps I am wrong. I don't think it is plastic. No, it's some type of uh, material that is biodegradable. Idaho says that's one good thing about gardeners living close to the ocean. Seaweed. I'm like 12 to 14 hour drive, drive so no good idea for me. No. I mean, I'm very lucky. I'm a 10 minute walk from the, the coast, so I can get plenty of seaweed and I use it a lot. But I, I'm guessing I, I might be wrong on this, but uh, garden centers do sell a liquid seaweed feed that you just add to your water like any other liquid feed. You don't, don't necessarily have to make your own, um, which might be an option for you if you are unable to get to the sea. Um, but I could be wrong. I don't know what it's like where you are, Idaho, if it's any different to here in the UK. Ballycillion, another main aim for next year is to collect more rainwater. Even though every plot has standpipe and hose pipes, plants grow amazingly better with rainwater. 
Ballycillian, as I said earlier, 16 water butts in my home alone, four in the allotment because we're only allowed two per plot. I've got to say that we don't use any tap water to water our plants at home. And it shows in our bills. We've got very low bills to the point that the uh, Southern Water are sending us letters threatening to come around and check our water meter just in case we're doing something we shouldn't be doing. And we're like, come and have a look. We use the rainwater for washing our cars. We use the rainwater for watering our gardens and washing down things that, that before or just rinsing things off before they go in the, the indoors for a good wash. I mean, things like buckets and stuff that not obviously not food items. Rainwater is such a valuable resource. If you can fit as many water butts as possible, then use them. And as I said, several hidden behind my shed because it is suitable. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, I filled two black bags today. So what you want to do every time you cut the lawn, add your grass clippings and add an equal amount of shredded paper and then carry on with that. Try and just balance up your green and your browns to make the compost. If it's in black bags, you can probably store it somewhere dry where it's not going to be too much of a problem. Um, that's probably the easiest way to use that up, in my opinion. Um, find it hard to believe Amazon sellotape is biodegradable. Uh, trust me, I've used it. I use it. It's uh, it's like a paper sellotape. It's not a plastic sellotape, but it's a paper sellotape. And I've put it in my compost bins. I've put it as a mulching layer. It breaks down and nothing is left from it. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely does work. And uh, Digwell was saying, mine rotted down. Not sure if that's true for all. The black and blue stuff does. I definitely found that. As I say, it's the tape that they use to seal their boxes. I don't know if they sell it, but I'm sure biodegradable sellotape does exist. Uh, Oracle says, is it for the school or home, Stuart? Home, it doesn't matter. School, do it right, i.e. match it. Then you get the waste from the canteen for the compost. Yes, Stuart, that's a good point, actually. You've got the waste from the canteen for the compost. Um, I tend to use food kitchen waste in our, um, what do I call them, uh, uh, um, wormeries, our sub pods, which is the underground composting system, which I love, and our wormery, they love, Love our kitchen waste and the worms just do their work in there. Idaho says Amazon tape I've seen is brown paper with some fiber. Yes, that's what we're sort of talking about. We we found it to be biodegradable anyway, and I'm pretty sure it is biodegradable. So David says they say they have biodegradable wet wipes, but they still take decades to disappear. So what you're looking for, this is, a, again, something that we've, we've been looking into with um, it's not a pleasant thing to talk about. But Roxy, when we take her on walks, we, of course, have to pick up a mess. And we've we've been looking for home compostable dog bags for that very reason. There's biodegradable, which generally means they will biodegrade over a, a period of time. There's compostable, but sometimes compostable means that they are only compostable on mass scale, i.e. in your green waste bin. But then there's home compostable, and the home compostable is what we're really looking for to really look at um, being able to compost at home basically it's because our home compost doesn't get as hot as our industrial sized composters so they don't break down as quickly and that's where uh that that's what we gotta look for home compostable uh jenny has said the storm has just hit it's biblical it's huge uh, yeah it was like that earlier here uh yeah um David says it'd be a lot easier if it is. They would save so much time. And Digwell's just got to, as always, he goes and researches the stuff as we talk about. Just found this. Is Amazon Prime tape compostable? Yes. The tape is 100% recyclable and costable. The thick fibres that hold it together are biodegradable. Hope that helps. There you go. Uh, there we go. Bally Sinner says, at last, Richard, I have something the mainland hasn't. We don't pay for water over here but still want to save more rainwater for its benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's 
we never in my old house we never paid we didn't have a meter we paid for water but we weren't on a meter here we're on a meter and actually i think it's worthwhile because we use so little water in reality uh, Brian says, I'm lucky enough to have access to fallen leaves. The wind blows them along alongside my exterior wall. Happy days. Leaf mulch, leaf mold, sorry. Uh, something I've been talking about on the podcast this week. Uh, what have we got? What have we got? Our... Uh, Digwell says, Cellar tape itself it is plastic, but they have a new one that is compostable. So there's something out there for that. Turbo Stream says, uh, Yeah, um, to Digwell. Potato starch poo bags, Richard. <laughs> yes, that's what we're looking at. Looking at home compostable, though. Uh, it's the same. I haven't got any, actually. You know the little packaging nuggets? They're meant to be some of those that are compostable now. The little foam things that are put in with packaging. But I've not found them um, get hot enough in our compost bins for them to break down enough. So, yeah, it's... Is biodegradable, but is it home compostable is the big question. Uh, Kate says, my wormery has produced the best compost I've ever seen, just from kitchen waste and shredded paper. There you go. This is one talk. This is why I love a wormery. Um, produces plenty of good, decent compost. Doesn't take up much room. Kitchen waste gets in. Less chance of getting racked by that as well. And you end up with good liquid feed as well. Rebecca says, all this talk of compost has made me think of a new goal for next year. Up in my compost game, I can get a bit lazy with just chucking everything in without checking ratios and shredding it all down. Yeah, this is, uh, again, something I'm thinking about when it comes to trying to be make more compost by being quicker with it as well. So I know exactly what you're talking about there. I need to really build a decent compost bin down on the allotment at some point. Uh, oh, crikey. So Stuart says, the trouble with school compost is we get far too many bananas and oranges, so we don't have to mix lots of stuff into it. Also, the bins are out the are pot out the way so the children forget to do it. Yeah, treat, treat it. This is how I would do it with kids, is uh, treat it like it's a worm farm. And we've got to feed those worms every day and look after those worms as if they're a pet as if they're an animal and try and get them to then take uh what's the word take uh responsibility for those animals that's how i would do it brian says i brought cloth like biodegradable plant pots last year dug the plants grown in them and the plots look still look fresh no roots outside from when they were planted in are they like I don't know if oh, you won't see them? Um, I know the ones you're talking about. I got some cloth pots just up here from a company called Root Pouch, uh, which I'll go, for, I'll grab those in a second for you. Um, but I then I know they've got plastic in them, so I know they're not watered, they, they won't dissolve down. Dig well, I'm still on water rate scheme 20 pound a month for water and sewage on no meter. I can't remember what we pay, but it's not very much. Poo bags with added basil may help. Got plenty of basil, plenty of basil at the moment. Uh, Jenny says, I've dissolved a starch bag in water. Took a few days, but it went. Oh, okay, okay, so it can work. Uh, Stuart says, the little white nuggets in packets need to be pot into water before you pot them into compost. This it then speeds it up. Oh, okay, so that's the starch again. Um, oh, I've got to look and find that. Yeah, it has to, Jenny. Or, or, oh, not sure what that is. Bally Sue says, Same for me, Brian. I work in a cemetery, a machine collects the leaves and pots them in a skip. Then I'm in the skip filling bags. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I've just been talking about leaf mold and using that leaf. I think it's a great, great resource, uh, to have. Jenny says, I use potato starch mail bags for eBay, etc. Can you send me a link to those? Because I'm looking for some biodegradable uh, of these things, really small things. But any members of my club will know what I use these for. And these are the only things I'm not keen on because they don't rot down. So if they are available, I'd love to know where from. 
Uh, now, Oracle says, now, Stuart, you are a teacher. Think about what you can do with the bananas. And it is true. He is indeed a teacher. But uh, we want if we want to find out more about Stuart, as I've said, I would like to get each week a get to know you video from you guys uh, with a chance from us or, or the audience to put an idea about the person behind the name. And Stuart Jackson has very kindly sent me a video. And this is what we're going to watch right now. Evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Stuart Jackson. Give you a little bit of background about my history. Um, I was a civil servant in my younger days. Um, at the age of 30, I retired, having had a car accident and broke my back. So I had to come out of the civil service as a, a storeman or stores officer, or whatever you like to call us, um, and then changed careers completely. I went from stacking armaments and blankets to um, teaching children. So I did, I, I got a little job at, a, at the local preschool where my children went or my oldest one went. And I thought, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this properly. So I did some teaching training, early years teaching training, and then I did forest school training. So long story short, I did probably 10 years there. And then I did a couple of show gardens there, one at Chelsea, one at Malvern. And then I moved on to the, my present school, um, which is from five till 11. As I was employed as a TA but the head teacher already knew that I had forest school training. So she had a plan that I was going to do, be the forest school teacher there. Um, so after sort of six months, she said, right, I need you to do two lessons a week on forest school. So that's what we did. And I've sort of built the gardens with the children. Um, we've done five show gardens with the children. Um, and I'm out every day, even though I only do two forest school lessons a week, I'm I'm in reception five mornings a week and Monday afternoons. So we are outside most of the time. So we do, you know, we do tool work, we do gardens, we do hammers and nails. And I'm basically, I do everything that you can do inside, I do outside. So that's my, my work life. My home life is I've got, I'm married to two children. I've lived in my present house since, oh, I don't know when, 28 years ago. Been married 29. Um, I've been gardening at home probably 10 years, but mostly until the last three years, it's been flowers. Um, long, and again, long story short, we lost my mum to a brain tumour. So to get my dad out and he didn't want to do his garden anymore. So we started digging his garden up and selling the plants and it sort of snowboard. He realised he could make money for charity. So he then started growing. I started growing. And then my other sister started, my sister started growing, my brother started growing, and it's sort of snowboard really. So from March to September, we do at least one plant sale a month. Um, so far, we've raised 17, over £17,000. Um, and when you think that the dearest plant we sell is £4, um, most plants are a pound. So we do a, a bag of a box of bulbs and it's, you know, two quid. Um, so we do, we do pretty well, really. And we have a little coffee shop alongside it. Um, but my veg garden only started really three years ago before lockdown. Um, I found Richard online and Lee, the skinny jean gardener, and it sort of inspired me to do a bit. So during lockdown, when I had a bit more time on my hands, I developed my little veg patch out the back of my garden, um, joined the supporters club, which is probably the best five pound a month I spend. And that is not an advert. He's not paying me to say that, but it is the best five pound I spend. Um, so, and it gets me out the house and it gets me to relax because during lockdown, if I hadn't been for my garden, I think I would have been like most of us, I'd have gone mad. Um, so I really enjoy being outside. I don't like being stuck in by the telly or I'm not an IT geek, as you can tell by my video, it's really basic. Um, but that's me in a nutshell, really. I, I grow to sell, I grow to eat. I grow to teach. That is me, sort of in a nutshell. I hope that it's not too long, Rich. Thanks very much for your help. And I'll see you all very soon. There we go. That was a bit about Stuart Jackson. Um, 
loved his greenhouse in the back there. All, all, te, te, uh, all uh, kept warm with all that bubble wrap. Fantastic, fantastic. Don't forget, uh, always after some get to know you videos, please do send them in. Easiest way, shoot your video, please, in landscape. And ideally, if you can, do it in 720. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, just shoot it and I will sort it my end. Send it to me. Go to wetransfer.com and you upload that video to there and it will then you enter my email address of which I actually have got a banner to tell you to make it easier, Richard at the vegwellpodcast.co.uk. And then um uh, I'll get it and I'll be able to show it in a future uh episode of this live show. It's just a chance to get to know the people behind the name. We are a community in this group. Uh, every Sunday we seem to come together and have a chat, and it, I think it's just been nice for us all to be able to get to know the person behind the name. Now, before we went to that, there was talk about the uh, woven pot. I can't remember who, who mentioned it. And I, I did say I'll grab the ones that I have. This is the ones, or one of the ones. This is the uh, two-gallon, eight-litre version. I've got quite a few of these from a company called Root Pouch. But, I mean, I think, they look quite nice. I haven't put these into use to test them. I'm waiting until the growing season before we can start to use these. But the person who I've got these from a trade stand, uh, Root Pouch, um, Australian company, a lot of the good gardening stuff does seem to come from Australia at the moment. But uh, what I've I've found with this, or what you tell me with these, is that these are made from old plastic bottles. They're recycled to make these woven containers and i'm a bit dubious about that because obviously we know plastic is a bad thing i'd sooner a plastic bottle was recycled into a plastic bottle to be honest with you but we're going to give it a try and see i don't know if that was what the conversation was about um uh, if they're the ones that were being mentioned so um Dear Grail says, same here with woven pots to Brian. Uh, shocking Chinese impots still whole after two years. And Brian says, they're the ones, Steve. Yeah. Uh, Dear Grail also says, brilliant, Stuart. D David says, great stuff, Stuart. Turbo stream, great video, Stuart. Andrew says, nice one, Stuart. A well, life well lived. Anna Jones says, thanks, Stuart. Uh, David Williams, have you got a link for the supporters club, Rich, please? Uh, I haven't to hand, but if you head to the veggrowerpodcast.co.uk and click on the link that says join the supporters club, you can sign up from there. Um, that's I can't remember. It's I can't remember the link off the top of my head. I'll have to and remind remember that for future. Um, I'm no good with IT. I know I could set up a clipboard, but I'm no good with it. Uh, teacher can't wait for the Q&A. He will be able to help us all. Yes, then we are going to do a q and I've got a message to it in a range of day. Um, we just got to figure out. The trouble is, in, as Stuart will say, his signal is not the best at his home. And we've got to try. And if he's going to be here for an hour and a half, we need a decent signal for it. So it's going to be a bit tricky in that regard. Uh, Andrew. Uh, oh, Andrew Noyes said a light, uh, nice Nice one, Stuart. A life well lived. Uh, Stuart says, if I can record a video, anyone can. So come on, team. Let's see all about you. Um, Rebecca says, nice to find out about you, Stuart. David Williams says, another thing for next year is mastering the art of getting a polycarb sheet to stay on the greenhouse. Yes, I don't use polycarbonate myself. Um, but I know a lot of I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out if gla with glass strengthens in my eyes, if a greenhouse is made out of glass, the glass is going to help with the structure and the strength of the greenhouse. Polycarbonate. I think the best thing I can suggest with polycarbonate, however, is to glue it into place using something like CT1 or a really decent, um, really decent builder style glue to hold them into place uh not what not that type richard the small pots that you use like peat pots or paper pots they go in the ground and rot down yes i know the ones you're talking about now they almost look like a bird's nest the way they're put together um 
Yes, yes. No, they do take a while to write down. There's also some pots out there made out of cow pats, if I remember correctly, as well. They're meant to write down quite well. Um, Jenny says, good video, uh, Stuart. Uh, Stuart, Koya products sell a great Koya pot. If you look after them, they will last a couple of years. Um, David says, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rebecca says, back to the aubergines. Are you keeping them inside, Rich? Good point, actually. Yes, the aubergines we sowed earlier right here. Yes, they're going to go in my greenhouse. We're going to leave, I'm going to leave these in the greenhouse. Obviously, because I'm on the south coast, fairly close to the sea, we very rarely get freezing temperatures, so I can probably get away with it a bit more. In hindsight, these probably could do with going inside in our house, which might be what I do instead. But yeah, they're, good. they're not going to be outside until about May next year, going to stay indoors. Uh, my mind's thinking as I as you asked that question. Good question, though. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I have also got what other things that am I um, put my ears in? I've got two more of my goals for next year. Now, the first, the first one is that I want to grow bigger garlic and onions. Now, I bring this up. Garlic, well, onions I planted last week with my new tool, which didn't quite work to plan. But today I got my garlic in as well. Got three different varieties. They were early, extra early purple white, cork white and rhapsody white, as well as my elephant garlic. Now, in the past, my garlic has been OK. These are all down on the allotment. In the past, my garlic has been OK. But this year, I want to make it really impressive garlic. I want to get the nice big bulbs. And the same with the onions. My onions generally aren't too bad, but I want to get them. I don't want the huge exhibition onions because I, I grow to eat. But I want the onions that are nice, nice, decent size that you would happily buy from a supermarket and being a uniform um, size. So you don't get a small one and a large one, ideally. Uh, the big aim, the big aim for me is to grow decent garlic and onions. As I say, mine aren't too bad, but I know we can do better. Bally Cillian says, any pictures this week? Yes, we'll get into the picture. Oh, crikey. Yeah, I haven't done the timing very well. We'll get into the pictures in just a moment. Digwell says, gorilla sealant and wire, drill holes through the alley profile on the outside of the greenhouse and thread wire through them. Twist it off. Panels cannot blow out, he says. Uh, Rebecca says, I was thinking the same, they do love heat. Yes, they do. And I've just moved all my uh, heated propagators into here because uh, trying, I'm not allowed stuff indoors so much. Digwell says, my third goal is to remove fill in every other path between my beds so the new beds are three times as wide, Wait, wanting space at the allotment, wasting space at the moment. Yeah, I do my paths at 60 centimetres, big enough to get a wheelbarrow down, but that but small enough that I'm not wait uh, not small enough that I'm not wasting growing space. Brian's garden allotment. Elisa Craig onions grow to a decent size, Richard. Yes, I know they do. I know they do. Um I I I was a bit late with those seeds, although they can be sown in December, can't they? We're going to be sowing some in December, of course. So, yeah, um, decent onions and garlic is on my list. I'm hoping to grow elephant garlic and shallots in pots. I cannot grow it at a community garden I go to as it's against their religion. First time growing in pots. You know, it won't, won't do too bad in pots, to be fair. Garlic and shallots are quite a... What do, I, what do I call them? Shallow rooted. In fact, I've got a picture coming up throughout this, the photos that will show you just how well they can do in pots. Um, it, it's probably not a bad idea to grow them in pots, to be honest. Now, let's have a look at these photos that have come in this week as uh, I have been reminded. I hadn't forgotten. Didn't get the timings quite right. Now, shipyard gardeners. Or the shipyard gardener, as he calls himself. He has been growing garlic and onions in pots, as you can see here. Uh, I've unfortunately been shot in um, 
oh, it, this way up. A bit difficult to see, but you can see in those pots, you can just see the tips just starting to show themselves. So it just goes to show they can be grown in pots. And here they are also in these longer pots. And I can clearly see onions on the top row and so on. So again, goes to show that they can be growing in pots, but also I like the way they use this space and it looks really, really good, I've got to say. Uh, he's also been harvesting his potatoes from his pomato, which is a, a, a tomato and a potato and tomato plant joined together. So, yeah, excellent. I've got to harvest mine, actually. It's just reminded me. Stuart Jackson, who we've just seen, he went to Wilkinson's and got these boots for five pound. Great buy. Great buy indeed. Digwell's been harvesting these tomatoes and potatoes, and I thought to myself, there you go, we can make chips and tomato ketchup with this lot. Absolutely delicious. Or potato soup, I guess, would be another option. Uh, plenty of harvests still coming in. Now, this picture, uh, aerial tubers, he called them. I'm wondering what is going on. Is this potatoes growing above the soil? Hopefully, Digwell's going to be able to answer that. It filled me with intrigue this now chris has been uh, asking for help with all of his green tomatoes on how to ripen them this is what he's come up with placed them in these wooden boxes with tomatoes and they seem to be ripening quite nicely good stuff good stuff uh finally kate who uh, is in the facebook group tonight she has been sharing this image you know when somebody ever asks you if the cup is half full or half empty and uh, we always say we can plant in it. <laughs> it's so true. It's what gardeners do. Now, as I said earlier, please do keep sharing those photos. You can post them in our Facebook group if you're not a member. Send them to us via social media. Um, or you can send them via email at richard at uk. Just suddenly realized the two e or the emails i got this week from the two viewers i could have used those i didn't ask for your permission to use those uh tonight but if that's okay you know who you are i'll use them next week uh jenny's got to go power cut and checking on elderly neighbors no problem that not nice having power cuts i was worried we were going to get a power cut here in all honesty especially as these rolling blackouts are meant to be or possibly coming uh, Bally Cillian says the shipyard gardener uses every available space and pot for growing in his garden and grows great crops. He's my brother. Yes, uh, I believe he ordered some merchandise recently as well. Hopefully he's got it by now. I saw that they were sent out to him. So fingers crossed he's got his uh, hoodie and mug. Um, so I've got one last thing that I'm hoping for my garden goal for 2023 and this is to do more preserving um now we're pretty good here we do preserve a lot especially in the freezer and we do make plenty of of pickles and courgette and chutneys and things we had courgette chutney for with our dinner tonight funny enough and i love it love it but next year i really want to push forward with the preserving side of things it takes a lot more time of course um i don't know where i'm going to find the time but more preserving is my last goal for 2023. So, yeah, six goals that I have for 2023. Uh, anybody else got any final gardening goals? Um, just quickly, Digwell says, aerial tubers, it's the potato homes suffer any damage. The plant still produces sugars and they get stored as above ground tubers that's what i thought so those potatoes were growing above the ground fantastic fantastic uh bally wonder is it my christmas oh i hope i haven't said anything i shouldn't sorry um yeah yeah uh david says love the last preserving thing you did rich would love more which one was that what was that was that the let me know which one that you're talking about david um it's definitely something i need to do more of i'm hoping chili k i haven't seen chili k or chili field tonight hoping we're gonna have a good conversation with those about preserving because she really does know her stuff there 
Uh, Stuart Jackson, another goal. Paper pots, not plastic. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, we've got about nine minutes to go of the show. Uh, phone line has been open all night, by the way. The phone number is up on the screen. I've tested the phone. So I don't know if anybody um, anybody did uh, try calling in, but it's a, it should work. It should work. David Williams, when you mentioned freezing chips, etc. Oh, right. When I, yeah, freezing. Yeah, yeah. When I talk about it, like, just preserving food ready to go, treating our stuff like ready meals. Yes, um, I've got to do more on the present. Like I say, I want to do more on the chutneys and pickles because I love making chutneys and pickles and jams um, and what have you. Um, oh, I, oh, God, God, sorry. I hope I haven't put, said anything out of place there, Samantha. Um, I just suddenly suddenly thought about it so apologies apologies if i said take it out of place uh rebecca says another goal is to continue with my wildlife quest i want more in my garden yeah yeah the wildlife is so important so it's so important uh david says it wasn't long ago no i do remember but we, we're gonna do some more of that um Digwell says he froze some more hash browns today. Indeed, indeed. So we've got seven minutes to go. Now, as I said, next Sunday, we are going live at 6 p.m. GMT, our normal time here in the UK, but the clocks have moved back. So, oh, no, hang on. So spring forward. Do we get an extra hour in bed next week? Is that that's what? Yeah, we get an extra hour in bed, don't we? Yes, yes. Excellent, excellent. So we will effectively be an hour later next week due to the clock change. Um, six six p.m. GMT. Um, that's the way to do it. But it is going to be next weekend. Uh, obviously, Halloween is the big thing and i don't really like doing halloween but it is a seasonal thing and sometimes we've got to have a bit of fun so what i thought we'll do next week and i need a lot of you guys to send me your input on this i want to know what your gardening horror stories are now they're not not ghosts or anything like that gardening horror stories you can make up your own stories as well if you want to add a bit of fun to it but i just want to have a a bit of fun um and that, that's what i'm thinking uh rebecca says are we growing anything next week i grow along with you if we are yes uh we will be um what are we gonna sow next week i'll tell you what i do um I'm trying to think that the the, the the seeds that I've got to sow, because I saw it out, and these seeds I've got to sow by the end of this year are indoors, and I'm going to try and sow loads. I think we've got some cabbages in there that need sowing. Um, so we'll do cabbages next week. Yeah, we'll we'll do cabbages next week. Um, the I will, but what I'll do, I'll post a. I'm trying to do some more reels and things on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. I will post something along those lines to try and advertise this ahead of time to uh, to, to, to let you know what I'm going to be sowing as well. So, yeah, please do join in on that. Digwell says shark fin melon next week. <laughs> That's a gardening horror story in it on its own, isn't it? Um, well, we're not going to sow those. We're not going to sow those until I find somewhere that I can definitely grow them. But, yes, uh, that's the plan for next week. Gardening horror stories. Got your thinking caps on. Share those with us. I'm going to have a bit of fun with it, like I say. Um, just to just to lighten the mood. Every now and then we need a bit of fun, don't we? And these seasonal holidays seem to make it all the nicer. Idaho says we had a last I had light frost last night, supposedly to get a hard frost tonight. So I'm going out to pick tomatoes, green and red. We we haven't had a frost here at home. I've still got tomatoes, cucumbers growing outside, believe it or not. Just goes to show how, how mild my climate and how easy I can get away with things. 
you know, these cucumbers, these tomatoes are still ripening as well, believe it or not. So, yeah. Uh, she also says, we'll pick the last cucumbers and zucchini too. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Trombuccino, very versatile, but crazy, crazy plant to grow. Excellent, excellent. It's been an um, interesting conversation this week Glenn, thank you so much for everyone for taking part as well um, especially the the things like the grow alongs and um sharing with me what your gardening goals are for next year a lot of people are talking about being a bit bit better organized growing more of certain crops growing what you like to eat seems to be an overriding thing as well grow more of that and not wasting that i think this has been great this is a really good chat to have and uh, i'd like to thank rebecca as well for making that suggestion for a topic as i said i'm always open to suggestions for future topics because uh sometimes I, I i forget what we have done with so many different forms of content going on but yeah um this is a conversation we want to have these solo conversations that really get our brains going Digwell says, don't normally get a frost until November. We did have a frost a couple of weeks ago where I was camping out, but not here at home. So we're quite lucky. And normally our first frost date is around November. Even then, it's very light. Rebecca says, lovely ch chat tonight. Thank you to everyone, and of course, Richard, for hosting. No, thank you for joining us, and thank you for participating. That's really what makes the show is everyone participating. Turbo stream, see you all next week, everyone. Indeed, we've still got a couple of minutes to go. Um, but, yeah, um, as I said, next week, Guardian Horror Stories. Be great to get on a get-to-know you video. If somebody would be good enough to send that to me. Email address is on the screen if you do want that. Keep posting your photos as well, and uh, we'll, we'll use those next week too. Um, anything else? Anything else? Anything else? So uh, what did I say I was going to grow next week? I better just make a note of that. Cabbage. The This is going to be the spring cabbage. Cabbage. Oh, cabbage. I really should start planning out what we're going to be growing a little bit ahead of time to try and uh, make it all come together. Uh, David says, thanks all. Idaho says, great conversation. I enjoyed hearing the goals. Good reminders for me. And Stuart says, cabbage, thank you for reminding me. So honestly, sometimes I swear I need a producer to remind half these things that I do. Idaho says, I sent a video but forgot to send to WeTransfer, so we'll try again. <coughs> uh, yeah, I meant to email you to find out what happened. Um, yeah, go to wetransfer.com to send it to me. Uh, and that'd be great. Digwell says, I may be busy impaling trick-or-treaters onto spikes next week, so apologies in advance if I'm not here. No problem at all. Uh, Hargrave, had a power cut halfway through the broadcast, so we'll catch up on what I've missed later. Thanks for another chat. See you all next week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that. I forgot to say that. Um, another night of knowledge and fun from Ballyslin. Love the show. Something for everyone. Right. Yes, indeed. Well, on that note, I am going to get out of here and... Uh, uh, get everything going forward. Um, please do, on your way out, give us a thumbs up. Please do follow, subscribe, whatever your notification bell or whatever platform is. Uh, added to that, don't forget to click the notification so you know we when we go live. Podcast comes out tomorrow, and I'm talking about plans and seeds, etc., etc. Um you take care, guys, and I will just quickly get myself set up. That's it. You take care, guys. I'll see you again next week.